it. Well, I'm, I'm going to begin by saying, of course, I mean, the war took place 100 years ago now. And I, I sort of sadly, we lost the very, one of the very final people who took part sort of, uh, as a sort of soldier from the war uh, quite recently. How important, is it, how important is it, sorry, through the medium of cinema to kind of, to never forget about history like this and, and to kind of, to continue to explore and to study it on film? You know, I think cinema is increasingly important about remembering these really calamitous events, partly because it's a great access point for all generations to watch movies um, as opposed to documentaries. Uh, but I also think that it does something that documentary can't do, which is to really emotionalise what it is to suffer day by day through an experience like that. And I think that's what Vera Britton's story is so special, is because she's so emotional about what she undergoes. And it, I think more than anything else I've seen the centenary, I think Testament of Youth is objective is to, is to bring experiences of love and loss to a new generation. Is it quite, is there something quite, I don't know, sort of uplifting for yourself as a filmmaker to know that you're making uh, films that not only can be in, sort of enjoyed from a kind of entertainment point of view, but oh, yeah. educate as well. Can oh, be, yeah. I mean, this could be shown at school, for instance. Yeah, oh, it's, it, makes, it makes an incredible difference for me because I've come up through documentaries where by its very nature, you know, you're making something that's a value just to being educational. So to make something as important as the First World War and to be the big film that comes out of the blocks, if you like, is a huge honour um, because you speak for all those people who suffered and lost during that war. It's a responsibility and it's a way of getting people to connect to that terrible event. So, yeah, it's an enormous honour. Uh, do you think Vera's memoirs are about as, as close as, as we can get to really understanding and appreciating the, the horrors of, of World War One? I think Vera's memoirs are very specific in one way of getting as close to we can get, in the sense that they're about the, a woman working behind the scenes, if you like, and struggling to deal with the anxiety of what it is to have young men sign up. I mean, there's a key scene in the film when she opens a newspaper and just sees the lists of dead. And that is what millions of women went through every day. Is my husband, my brother, my son's name going to come up on that list? And that's the anxiety of war. That's what Vera Britton's memoir is about. And just how helpful was the support of, of Vera's daughter, Shirley Williams, this production? Because I, I read that she was sort of involved in, in some capacity. Yeah, no, Baroness Shirley Williams being Vera Britton's daughter is incredibly important, partly for a kind of sense that we had somebody to ask questions if we needed to, and Alicia did ask questions, particularly from Shirley, um, but also to know that we got it right. I mean, she loves this film, and I think that, for me, is a real testament not just so much to youth, but to filmmaking, if you like, that, to, you know, she's quite a harsh judge, as Shirley Williams. She's a tough cookie, but she really loves the film Testament of Youth, and I, I take great honour in that. I really feel good about that. Uh, both uh, Alicia and Kit have spoken of, of how much they enjoyed their collaboration with you, and it sounds like you're quite a sort of hands-on director. You spend a lot of time with your actors. Is, mm. is that something that you, you value a lot? Do you, do you find it very important to kind of spend a lot of time with them, particularly in the kind of pre-production stages? You know, I think as a director, increasingly, you know, it's harder to find this time alone with the actors. But one thing I really think is important is that we work together and share so there are no nasty shocks on set. You know, we're absolutely understanding of what we want to convey about the characters because the nightmare situation is that as a director you know you've got two wonderful actors but we're not thinking on the same wavelength and one wonderful about this in kit is that we talked a lot to make sure we were in complete cahoots about what we wanted alicia to be as vera and kit as roland I mean, there were some really tough scenes to watch in this film, but were there any, were there any that were quite tough to shoot and to direct? Or is it quite, <clears throat> is it quite easy to actually separate yourself from the, from the content and just treat it as a director would? Oh, you know what? I mean, I wish I were more affected by the content, but I think I've made a lot of harrowing documentaries, 9-11, big film in Auschwitz, and I'm quite used, a bit like a medic, if you like, around a surgery table, not connecting too much with the material. My job is to judge whether we're getting what's truthful, authentic, and powerfully emotional. It's not my job to start weeping on the set. I mean, because I, I, I can recall the, the 9-11 uh, phone oh, calls. Great, uh, thank you. Piece that you made. And I mean, it was one of the most hard to watch, difficult oh, things I've ever seen. I mean, ha were you, was there ever a point where you, you, you find it very difficult to sort of to come into work that day? I, I know you're sort of saying there is a level of professionalism, but when you're dealing with, with, mm. with content like that, mm. is it ever a bit overwhelming? It, it's very overwhelming um, sometimes. You know, I'm, I happen to be Jewish and I made a big film in Auschwitz and that was very powerful because, you know, I'd lost 
distant relatives in that concentration camp. So I think when there's something that you relate to, so for example, on the 9-11 film, there was a family who had a very ill son, and I have a brother who's very ill. So again, it touched me very profoundly. Mm. I mean, because you have done quite a lot of, uh, not just uh, documentaries, but TV movies yeah. before. Uh, just how different is the dynamic when you're making a film for the big screen? Is, is the whole event different? I mean, do you approach it in a different way when you know that at the end... Uh, what sort of transpires as a piece that's going to be shown in cinemas rather than on the, on the television? Well, I will from now on approach. In the, <laughs> because it was my first film, I was perhaps a little complacent about the connection between television and film. I, I would say, honestly, the heart of the filming is just the same. Not enough time, not enough money. Get the best performances you can, get as much coverage as you can. What's really different is the beginning process because you're very much part of the financing of a movie and your currency in that process. So you have to sell the movie. And the end, because you have a lot of other voices coming in on the film, trying to make it as good as they can. Whereas in television, it's quite a small number of people. So I would say the heart is similar to television, although you want to be more cinematic about the shots and everything. But the it's the beginning and the end that are most different. So finally, what is next for you now? Do you, can you see yourself staying in, in cinema? Definitely want to stay in cinema. No, it's fantastic. It's great. It's exciting. And it's thrilling. Um, I can't say what's next, partly because I don't know for sure. Um, and partly because I think I need a bit of time to think about it. Well, I look forward to whatever it is. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Thank you so Thanks much. So for much. Great. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!